On March 10, 1749, Emanuele Cuneliano is born to poor Jewish parents in Ceneda, Italy, a small town outside of Venice, today known as Vittorio Veneto. But shortly after he turns five years old, his mother passes away. His father falls in love with a Christian woman. Because Jews could not marry Christians at this time, his father converted his family to Roman Catholicism. The local bishop, named Lorenzo da Ponte, baptizes the entire family. As the oldest son, as was tradition, Emanuele Corneliano takes the bishop's name, rebirthing the librettist we know today as Lorenzo da Ponte. The bishop continues to support the family, paying for the young Lorenzo da Ponte's books and his schooling at the seminary. This sparks da Ponte's lifelong passion for poetry, language, and literature. In 1768, the bishop dies, and without his support, the family falls back into poverty. After the bishop's death, the only way for da Ponte to continue his education is to become a priest. He enters the seminary of Ceneda and the seminary of Porto Gruaro, taking full holy orders at the age of 24. He becomes a seminary teacher in literature and rhetoric, but while he explores his passion for literature and writing, he begins to create enemies due to the political nature of his poetry. Fast forward to the year 1777, and da Ponte has moved to Venice after losing his teaching job. He adapts very well to the infamously promiscuous Venetian lifestyle with lots of drinking, partying, and gambling. And he begins an affair with a married woman named Angioletta. Da Ponte's seductions are aided by his ability to write verses and poems on the spot for any woman he wanted. Da Ponte impregnates Angioletta, and more than once. Because he's a Catholic priest fathering children with a married woman, the Venetian authorities charge da Ponte with public concubinage and living an adulterous life. But it is more likely that he is in trouble with the authorities for publishing poems of political sedition. He is found guilty and he is banished from Venice for 15 years. In 1780, at age 31, da Ponte is tricked into moving to Dresden, Germany, where he is told a job was waiting for him writing and translating operas for the Italian theater. That job is actually held by his friend Caterino Mazzola, and there is not enough work for both of them. But da Ponte's writing impresses his friend Mazzola, who suggests that da Ponte start a career as an Italian librettist and writes him a letter of introduction to the famous composer Antonio Salieri. Da Ponte moves to Vienna in 1782 to meet Salieri. Although da Ponte has never written a libretto, Salieri asks him to write for his operas. In 1783, Salieri introduces him to Emperor Joseph II, and da Ponte is appointed poet to the court. His first libretto with Salieri, Il Ricco d'un Giorno, is considered a disaster, but Emperor Joseph encourages him to keep writing. In 1786, da Ponte's next libretto, Il Burbero di Boncore, with music by Martini Soler, is considered his redemption. It was so successful that the emperor shouted, Abbiamo vinto, meaning we have won. Da Ponte's most notable collaboration is with Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. He writes the libretti for The Marriage of Figaro in 1786, Don Giovanni in 1787, and Così fan tutte in 1790, which go on to become three of the most beloved operas still performed today. Da Ponte is at the height of his popularity and success when his favorite patron, Emperor Joseph II, passes away. The emperor's younger brother, Leopold II, assumes the throne. He is not a fan of da Ponte and his political leanings. He dismisses da Ponte from his post as poet to the court. Adding to the tragedy, da Ponte loses another dear friend and his most trusted collaborator, Mozart, in 1791. Da Ponte turns to writing, but his political poems get him in trouble again and the new emperor banishes him from Vienna. In 1792, at age 43, Da Ponte is forced to leave Vienna and sets off through Europe to find work. He stays in Holland for a short time, but finally settles in London in 1793. After 12 years in London, Da Ponte, age 56, is once again plagued by debt and is arrested over 30 times. He decides to flee London. In 1805, Da Ponte makes the ultimate trip. He leaves for the United States of America. In New York and New Jersey, he runs a grocery store, but that goes bankrupt. He then opens an academy in Manhattan and teaches lessons in Italian, but then that also goes bankrupt. He moves to Pennsylvania, where he opens a gin distillery and a traveling general store, both of which also go bankrupt. 
After 14 years of bankruptcies and moving cities in America, things begin looking up in 1819. He opens a bookstore and becomes the first professor of Italian literature at Columbia University, at the time Columbia College. In 1828, at age 79, he becomes a naturalized citizen of the United States of America. In 1833, DuPonte builds New York's first opera house, the New York Opera Company, to introduce Italian opera to the United States. In 1836, DuPonte finds himself once again in more debt, forcing him to close the opera house after only two seasons. On August 17, 1838, DuPonte passes away at age 89. New York City honors him with a citywide funeral procession. Although he never reached the same level of recognition as the famous Mozart, Duponte left a lasting legacy. Not only did he write at least 29 opera libretti, but he introduced an entire country to the Italian language, Italian literature, and Italian opera by bringing all three to his newfound home in the United States of America. Nearly 200 years later, Duponte's story will ring throughout the Wortham Theater and come to life on stage.